What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So if you're like me and are constantly on this journey of trying to improve your mental and emotional well-being, then make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. All right, so yeah, Katie Morton just made a video yesterday about like hustle culture is unhealthy. And yeah, I wanted to share some thoughts about that because there's, there's a lot of conversation around hustle and there's a lot of conversation around burnout. And if any of you have known me or followed me for more than five minutes, you know that I'm really into two things, all right? Hustle and self-care. Okay, like I'm a recovering drug addict. I struggle with a generalized anxiety disorder. I've been diagnosed with depression. You know what I mean? But I work my butt off, okay? So something that we're gonna be talking about in this video is, I think the main point I wanna get across is we, we often think that hustle and self-care are mutually exclusive. Like it's either or, but that's not the case at all, all right? So I wanna take a, a few clips and comment on them from Casey, uh, not Casey, but Katie's video, um, because as some of you know, I've done some videos about burnout and everything like that. But anyways, let's start out with this one. Uh, it's towards the end of the video, but I wanna start out with this clip about Casey Neistat. And I honestly think that we've kind of let things get a little out of whack when it comes to this. I mean. This is no shame on any of your creators or anybody out there, but like, I know even Casey Neistat has a tattoo that says work harder and um, all of that pressure to like get up and get all this stuff done and, and make more and do more. So there's two, there's two ways that you can look at Casey Neistat's tattoo and Casey Neistat's hustle, right? Like you can look at it as work harder, drive yourself into the ground, just, you know, screw everything else. Friends, family, it's all about hustle and success, right? But that's not the way I interpret it, okay? Because I don't know about you, but I can make so many excuses for myself. So many excuses, you know what I mean? Like, for a long time, I spent many years just sitting in self-pity, like, you know, why don't I have this? Why aren't I where I wanna be in my life? You know, all these other things, and I realized, like, I'm not, I'm not putting in the work, you know what I mean? Like, I was very entitled for a long time. I thought that this world just needed to hand things to me, right? Like, um, I feel, I feel like that's one of the reasons why, you know, you got boomers talking crap about millennials, you know, like, back in my day, I used to walk like 15 million miles up in the snow. You're lazy and all this other stuff, you know? And part of it is because like, I can relate to that mindset. I'm one of those millennials. I'm on the older end of being a millennial, but it's because I wanted the rewards without putting in the work. So when I see somebody like Casey Neistat or anybody else who's talking about, you know, hustle and hard work, it's a reminder to me that if, if there are certain things that I want, I need to work for them. You know what I mean? Like, I, I still spend a ton of time binge watching uh, Netflix with my girlfriend and uh, spending time with her, you know? I spend a ton of time with my son and I play video games with him and we cook new recipes every single weekend, right? Like, aside from that, I am working my butt off. I have two jobs plus YouTube, plus my writing, plus managing all my social media, and you will not find one person in my life that feels neglected, okay? So that hard work that Casey Neistat has tattooed on his arm and self-care is not, it's, it doesn't have to be either or. But during this time, because financially I wasn't rewarded, I felt this intense urge to work, 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 no matter what. And I'd feel guilty if I slept in, even when my body really needed it, not just me laying there not wanting to do anything, just I'm tired. When I'd wake up and it would be like nine o'clock in the morning, I'd be like, shit, I'd feel super bad about it. Or if I took the weekend off from work, I'd be like, I could have got so much more done if I just didn't, you know, do nothing and hang out with my friends on the weekend. 
And I would look online and see other creators or influencers talk about their schedules. You know, I'd wake up and they've already posted a photo to Instagram or, you know, tweeted all morning about things they're thinking about, posted a video and currently doing a live stream for God's sake. And I would allow myself to feel lesser than. All right, so now we're back at the beginning of uh, Katie's video. And something else I wanna discuss throughout this video is like, this is all internal. This is 100% internal. Like, I, I feel like it's unfair to keep knocking hustle culture and people who want to work hard and, you know, all these other things when this is an internal issue, right? So Katie Morgan's absolutely right. Like, we are constantly comparing ourselves to others. And whether you're hustling or not, like, that is a bad place to be, right? Like, something I learned a long time ago is that we can't compare our insides to another person's outsides. You know, but like one of the reasons that I, I I don't like this conversation is like looking at somebody and judging them and we create this narrative about people, right? We're like, oh, you're working so hard. You're doing all these things. You must not be spending time with your family or friends. And we don't even know that. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know how much time they're spending with the people in their lives. Like, hell, some of them might be neglecting the people in their lives, but we don't know that about them right? But when it comes to comparing ourselves to others, like I am a huge believer that social media isn't the problem. We have a problem comparing ourselves to others on social media. As if I hadn't done enough. And if I wanted to pay off my student loans, huge goal of mine, you know, and being an adult, I don't know why I tie this to being an adult, but I do. Or maybe buy a house someday, you know, I felt like then if I wanted all those things, I had to work harder and harder and harder. Right here, Katie uh, Morton is talking about like, you know, her debt and her bills and everything like that. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Like, by the way, in case I haven't told you yet, get out there and vote. Okay. Like the, the average, the average household is not making nearly enough money to pay off student loan debt, to buy a house, to do these things. Like, um, I hear a lot of people talking about like, you need to put money away in savings, but like most people are living paycheck to paycheck. And for me, for me personally, it's like, what can I control and what can't I control? Right? Like, for example, um, I've been at my new job for about six months now. What I could control is how I negotiated how much they paid me. What I couldn't control is their decision on how much to pay me, right? And I have debt, right? Like I do want to go back to college, but I have a student loan debt from back when I was a drug addict that I need to pay back. So it's this give and take, right? Like you don't have to pay off your student loan debt. Or like Katie Morton says, like she wants to buy a house. You don't have to buy a house, but if you do, you gotta work a little bit harder. And part of that is just because of the economy. You know what I mean? So hopefully we get somebody, you know, new in office that can help, you know, some of us make a little bit more. Like Andrew Yang was talking about trying to do universal basic income and all that. But until those things happen, we just need to realize if we want those things, we got to put in a little bit extra work. Does it suck? Would it be nice to just work one job, nine to five, and have that be enough? Absolutely, that would be amazing. But we also have to pull ourselves back into reality and be like, oh wait, that's not the case. We shouldn't have to constantly choose between meaningful relationships and our work schedule, or taking the time to decompress when we need it. So right there, it goes back to what I was talking about. It's not an either or situation, okay? So just to give you a quick rundown about my life, and this is one of the reasons why I, I like talking about burnout, is because I'm trying to figure out what it, how, how I'm able to do so much without getting burned out. And I think it's because I find balance, right? So I have a full-time job. I have a second job, which is part-time. I put in about, 20 hours a week with it. Luckily for me, that second job, hours are flexible because I do it at home on my own schedule. It takes a lot of work though, right? 
I also have this YouTube channel. I have my second YouTube channel. Many days I'm uploading two videos a day. I'm also, I've also been writing a lot on medium.com, you know, all these other things. But on the other hand too, I spend an enormous amount of time with my girlfriend and my son. Next week I have a friend coming in town, uh, my old roommate, and he lives across the country. He's gonna be in town. I'm gonna go spend time with them. So it doesn't have to be this either or scenario. And there's just something about getting outside and not thinking about work that is so, and this sounds weird to say it this way, but it's so inspiring and motivating, not to mention recharging. And I didn't do any work that weekend and I came back just feeling excited about the week. Yeah, like she said, take breaks. Take a breaks. <laughs> like, I, I know I can be a workaholic, but like our self-care needs to be the top priority, you know? Um, I've talked a lot about how we need to get our sleep straight and, you know, we need to get our physical health in shape. Like these are two things that greatly improve our mental health, right? And this is why, like, we have to make our self-care a top priority. Like, instead of working all night, I'm like, no, I'm going to sleep. You know what I mean? Like, I need to be refreshed so I can get more done tomorrow and have more time. You know what I'm saying? Because some of us, like, for example, if, like, I, I know a lot of you watching this aren't YouTubers, but at work, if we are not at the top of our game, we don't get all the things done that we need to get done, which then carries over to the next day and we have even more stress. So we need to figure out a way to manage our time at work, but also manage our personal time. Like what I see from a lot of people, because a lot of my friends aren't, you know, juggling all the balls that I am, is that they are not making time for themselves to just do their own thing. But if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, like I live in Las Vegas, I know a lot of people who go out and party and everything like that. I'm not telling anybody that they gotta be sober like me, but I, I've seen a lot of people who, who just go out, party, all night Friday night or all night Saturday night and then the next day is completely gone, right? So you're taking these, you know, X amount of hours one night, wasting an entire day. Like it's it's no wonder why you feel like you don't have any self-care time. My suggestion is plan out different things. Like say, hey, here's what I wanna do this weekend. Here's some self-care time. And on top of that, like listen, if you suck at making self-care time, like schedule it. I use my calendar app on my phone so much it would blow your brain up. I get reminders just um, to make sure I'm getting tasks done, but also like, here's this, here's that. Like today I just got my uh, little reminder that I have a therapy appointment today. You know what I mean? Like I've been meditating, I've been going to the gym, I've been eating right, I do therapy, you know, I'll journal when I need to, all these other things. We can do these things and work hard because I don't know about you, but sometimes I need to recognize or be reminded that I'm not a robot. I know, shocking, but we're going to have to shift how we think and talk about our work, praising rest and relaxation as well as effort and hard work. Yes, yes, yes. Praise relaxation, okay? Praise it. Like if any of you follow me on Instagram, um, I, I used to, you know, post like, you know, quotes or like I would play around with it. Like I would post quotes or like tell you about new videos or, you know, whatever it is. And lately I've just been posting my regular life and like, I haven't explained why, but I'll tell you now, I'll let you in on this little secret. Um, but one of the reasons I, I post about my normal life and, you know, hanging out with my son or my cats or whatever is because I want you guys to see how much work I get done and how much time I actually spend just chilling. You know what I mean? There's this, this balance that we have to find. So what we also have to do is when we find that self-care time, when we find you know those breaks, like I think something that a lot of us miss is doing something, doing something of value, right? Like I don't think many people feel refreshed after they, you know, waste a bunch of time. Like Tristan and I have been binge watching Shameless, you know, and it's not the show that I feel makes it valuable. Like it's, it's, it's a good show, right? But it's spending time with Tristan talking, 
Like we talk about the show, we talk about the characters, we take breaks in between episodes and things like that. It's not, you know, that stereotypical, like just two people like zoned out on the couch. You know what I mean? I don't feel like, you know, playing video games is this mindless waste of time because I'll play them with my son or I'll be listening to a book while I'm playing them. You see what I mean? So when we're finding that rest, when we're finding that free time, when we're t doing some self-care, we need to find something that brings us value, whether it's, you know, doing some like arts and or crafts, as silly as that might sound, right? Um, you know, doing puzzles, cooking, doing something, right? Rather than these mindless activities. Because one of the last things I wanna talk about is, like one of the ways I started getting more stuff done was I realized how many hours I was just wasting on mindless activities. I, I would be really curious to find people who feel burnt out or feel like they're overworked and just look at, at a breakdown of their day. You know what I mean? Um, because when I audited my time, I realized how much time I was wasting doing things that brought me nothing of value. And when I talk about value, I, I don't mean like the monetary things, right? Like Katie Morton talks about in her video, like a lot of people are trying to monetize, you know, like everything, right? Like when I'm talking about value, I mean like, like value for our soul, value for ourself. Like that's what we need to figure out for that free time. So my recommendation to you is find, like write down a list, write down a list of things that bring you value, that bring you joy, right? Or things that you wanna experiment or try. You know what I'm saying? Like those things will bring you value and then that, that will replenish you to get back to work. You know what I mean? Because like I said, like I said, in a beautiful world, all of us, me, you, and everybody else could go to our nine to five, have plenty of money to pay off student loan debts, to buy a new car, to buy a house, and you know, do all these things, right? But unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. And we have a choice, we have a choice. Like one of the reasons I take issue with people knocking hustle car, uh, culture is, nobody's pointing a gun at your head. Nobody is pointing a gun at your head. You don't have to hustle. For me, my fear, here's my fear, and I might be totally wrong, my fear is that all these anti-hustle videos are giving people an excuse to be lazy and be entitled, okay? That's just my opinion because that that's how I can be. So maybe that's a projection, but that's how I can be. I need people who motivate and inspire me because they're putting in such hard work. And I think Casey Neistat's a great example. That dude is constantly spending time with his family while simultaneously working his butt off. You know what I mean? But let me know uh, your thoughts down in the description below. I'll also have linked um, up in the info card and in the end screen about uh, uh, time management. Um, because that's something that helped me a lot with burnout, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who buys the mental health books from TheRewiredSoul.com and the Rewired Soul merch, like the logo shirt. I also have it on a hoodie, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.